Okay, everybody, uh, I did the live stream. I had this up and I had it done wrong. I took a little time. I'll put an overlay of the schematic here. But what I had to effectively do is kind of carefully walk through each connection point. I have the gate, the drain, and the source, and then the case in the, in the layout. And I will kind of show that in front of here as well. It's gonna be potentially hard to see, but that's shown here. This little tab has the source drain and gate and the case. So, you know, I'm going off of that here. And so it looks like I think I have this right now. So we have on the schematic, if you look, we come in with 150K with our high voltage B plus at the top. We come into a 100 microfarad 50 volt capacitor to ground, as well as an 8.2K resistor to ground. So that's those two going to ground. I'm gonna have my ground wire coming off of here. I'll solder that in in a minute. Next, I just had to rearrange it a little bit. You saw me do most of it, but I had it all wrong because I'm adjusting this on the fly. Next. There's a 10K from that junction point to the drain. And on this case, that's here. Also going from the drain to the potentiometer, which I will, I think you saw me, I'm gonna put in these three here in a bit. It will just kind of set in like this in a bit once I'm ready to solder that. Um, uh, there is a 4.7 microfarad going over. So I have to kind of bring that over the top. It's, it's got its body touching the leads. So we should be safe there over to that side of that. Uh, and then, that goes into the trim pot of which this backside is the output to the uh, next stage. On the other side of it is the ground, which ties back into you know other grounds that I have here. So uh, that aside, we now come over to the actual input, which comes in here to a 100 picofarad microcapacitor and a one meg resistor, which are here, but also connecting at that same point is a 3.3 meg to ground, which is this one. And so I've got these, you see the black wires are my grounds. That references that to ground as well. And then the ground of that potentiometer is here as well. And so I'll hopefully kind of be, hopefully making that make sense on the screen, uh, probably up in the corner there with that schematic as well. And then finally, um, the 8.2K and 4.7 microfarad capacitor from the source to ground, this is the source pin, comes up here. And that's why that black wire is up here. So that's these the ground reference of so those coming around to there. So that's that connection. I just kind of set that off up here on the side to give it some room. So I've now got it done. So what I need to do is give myself a grounding wire and then I can solder that point in, give myself an input wire, solder that point in, and then give myself, uh, put the potentiometer in and then send off the output wire there as well. So we will go ahead and do all of that really quickly now. So I'm gonna turn the fan on. You guys will have to deal with the obnoxious noise for a minute. I'm now looking at something that's confusing me because the high voltage that I jumped right over here I don't even know that I need this now I'm trying to look at that and figure out what I had done that for because it seemed like I needed to have the B plus coming into that point but it only connects to the 10k so I actually actually that's not needed so I will have to I'll just snip it here so it's easy to get it out of the way. It's just an extra connection I don't need. And then I'll pull this up and kind of carefully find a way to snip it as well. But there we go. That was kind of silly. I'm seeing now all of those points, if we look at the schematic, 
all those points of the high voltage come into the 8K resistor, the, the 100 microfarad capacitor, and then there's a 10K jumper from there over, but everything else goes to ground. So that was unneeded. So I'll fix that now. All right. Um, All right, so I finished that up. Just had my daughter come ask me for some help, but I'm gonna do some quick validation, and you should be able to see this with me as well. I want to see, hopefully, that we get all of the right kinds of readings. So at our input, we connect from there to there. I should get uh, the 10K. It can sometimes be hard to get through the crust of stuff that gets there. Actually, I may change to my, I've got some good fluke ones that have very sharp tips that might be better for this. So, measuring resistance. I get 150K, looks good. And then the ground, I should have 8K. Four ohms. How is that possible? I don't make no sense. Oh, I forget. Sometimes when you have a capacitor in circuit, you'll get really weird behavior. So in circuit, this is, uh, and maybe even uh, I'm like routing electricity through a completely different route than I expect right now. But I might be sending voltage into the right part of this to create a circuit flow through basically, you know, through there or something, I don't know. But at any rate, um, I do want to test continuity though. So let's do some continuity testing. Make sure we seem to have a good connection to ground from here to here. We do. Uh, let's also check from here. Yes, we do. In the case. We do. So we're getting good ground across that. I think we I feel comfortable there. What I would like to do now also is see if I can... Looks like I touched that a little. Ugh, that kind of annoys me. Um, it didn't melt all the way through, but it looks ugly. So now I'm going to want to check resistance from here to here. 15 ohms, but it's resistance from here to here. There's one point... What? Oh, see, I'm, I think I'm getting weird behavior because of the... This is this stuff here, I think. Oh no, I know what's going on. Ha, I figured it out. I've got a bunch of wires back here touching each other. So I'm gonna need to snip all these now so that they're not gonna impact things. I just about made a rookie move there. I am a rookie, so it's okay. See how I just had a wire connecting between two points? All of these need to be snipped and cleared. so that we don't accidentally jump or anything. stuff up. But. All right, so now we're clear. Everything looks well cleaned up. And now we will try testing our resistances. I was thinking, you know, sometimes you can have capacitors do weird things, but I think once they charge up, they usually turn out okay. But let's try that again now. So now if I connect from here to here, I'm getting 6K, but it's changing and it's supposed to be 8.2K, but I think 
there's potentially effective series of resistance to the capacitor and other kinds of weird behavior going on. And now it's changing. See, it's kind of all over, but that's because the capacitor is in circuit with it directly. It's similar here. We've got capacitors around, but it's saying it's 6-ish K, and it's a 10 K. To ground from here, we should have... Actually, I can just connect here to ground. I should have the 3.3 .3 meg, but I'm getting 146 ohms. That might be uh, also capacitance. I don't know. Or it could be going through the... That, I don't know, as well. So let's check here. I'm getting really weird readings here. That's 9K. And that's 17 ohms. And I, yeah, I am dialed all the way one way, so if I... Rotate that a bit. Five point seven K and three point two K. So yeah, that's about the ten K range we want. All right. So I think I've got this built correctly. We'll find out when we put it in the amp, but that part is now done. So the next thing I wanted to work on very quickly here is I'm going to try and put together my relay boards. So I'm going to pause the recording for a minute and get the parts I need for that, and then you'll be back here after the break and you'll see me doing the relay boards. All right, we can turn this off for a second. All right, so for the e relay boards, I'm just using Doug Hoffman's. I highly recommend them. They're really good. Uh, I've heard nothing but reviews, rave reviews myself from them, but I mean, he's really good. I've never used his relay boards, but I've used his products and services before, and I dig them. So check out HoffmanAmps.com for all of your amp needs. Uh, and he's not paying me. I just, I, I'm, a, I'm a loyal, happy customer. All right. So what comes in this bag? is we have a couple of relays um, and the way he set this up is you can put turrets on them if you want to uh, or you can oh i'm not showing it on the screen so these are the relay boards you can put turrets on these if you want to but i'm going to probably just solder directly into those holes uh, and then he provides you with kind of the hardware you need to mount those and then he also provides me a um, a bag that's got the actual socket points and a couple of um, um, diodes that are protection diodes because the basically the as the the relay itself as it opens and closes um, it cre can create like a flyback voltage that can be fairly high and damaging to a lot of stuff um, so you put the, the diode in to protect it from going the wrong way and so it has a it'll end up having the inability to toast things effectively by doing so so the way this is supposed to work now, and I've not done it before, but you effectively, this is the type that's for the relay socket, but you don't need all these pins. You only need pins, if you can kind of see here, on every other one for those first three, and then there's a big gap, and then just the last few. Um, let me turn that. So um, that effectively is what, one of the things you do is you're supposed to go in and pull out the pins you don't need with just your, you know, your pliers or tweezers. So, and I think that you just kind of push upwards in theory. Um, and I just went and bent the one I need. Nice job. Um, but effectively, uh, I'm debating... Uh, I don't know how hard this will be to do this. I've never done it before. I don't know if they come out the bottom or the top. Or if I should just snip them off and say bag it. But... Um, you only need to use the pins. Oh, and I should probably be looking. I'm doing the wrong ones anyway. Um, effectively, you can see, you want your dimple to match the top part of that. Um, but, um, I don't know. I might just take my snips, since I don't need them, and carefully snip the ones that I don't need off and just leave the top part there. Like so. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. So I will start carefully... Snipping the ones I don't need away. All right, so as you can see, hopefully now, that aligns with the pattern that I have there. So I should now be able to see it to drop in. And I did bend one, so it's being a problem. All right, so 
The tricky part of this really is uh, how I, oh, you know what I might be able to do? I don't know if I can get close enough to do that though. Probably not. But I wanna kind of just pinch just this guy if I can, carefully, so it's not gonna move. And then I can drop this guy down on top of it, hopefully. I can't really tell if I'm getting that good or not. It looks like it is. All right. Uh, you know what? I can't see very well. Let me just try and do this instead. All right, that does look like that worked. So I will quickly solder one pin in. That. I'm not too worried about the fan for a second because I just want to see if this works the way I hope it does. I'll come to the top here and solder another pin. Be done. And then I will quickly just temporarily detach this and see if it looks flush, which it does. Alrighty. Okay. So I can now technically just kind of do the whole board and solder those in. So I'm going to turn my fan on really quickly. All right. So now I'll just solder the rest of these guys in. All righty. So that's done. I'll flip it over. Now what I'll want to do is I can just do a continuity test really quickly from, um, I'll put this on continuity. So what I can do is I put, if I touch this and then touch this, there we go. But I should not get it anywhere else. All right, cool. And then the other thing that we'll want to do is get this um, diode and put it in. All right, so that board is now basically ready. All right, so what I'll probably try and do here in a moment is test this out. Um, I don't know if I'll have time to do it today on this one because I have to kind of prep myself what I need. But So let's just quickly, I have a, a screw, and a standoff, a nut. I'm gonna repeat this process for the other one really quickly as well, but uh, screw. A standoff, little nylon standoffs, and a nut. So these are gonna go in the chassis over by where the switching happens, obviously, because that's what relays do is switching. All right, so that's a relay board done, and now I need to quickly get my relays out of here, and we'll put one in place. And the good thing about this kind of a seat arrangement is if for whatever reason 10 years down the road if the relay itself goes kaputin all you got to do is pop it out and pop another one in so we're going to pull this guy out and as you can see we've got the same kind of alignment here so we just put it in like this and it is now seated so in theory what i would need to do is with the relay, I don't have the nine volts power to hook up to it right now, but I think it's nine volts. No, sorry, 12 volts. Um, and I need to get a, a power supply for this. But in theory, right now it's set for continuity. So each side of this is one side of your normally open or normally closed. Uh, I think it's the first one, if I remember. Yeah, so the first one is your entry point, if I remember right. And then and each side just has a different switching mechanism. But the first one here is 
normally close like this. And then if you switch it, this back one would be open, but I don't have nine volts to switch it. So uh, that's pretty much how relay works. And you have, it's a dual pole, dual throw. So when you flip this, both sides switch back and forth. Uh, there will be some particular jumpering I'm gonna need to do for the dumbbell that, that the dumbbell itself had. And I will likely just dump, jumper those on the bottom here. So I might need to jumper, I don't know, say from here to here or something. And I'll look at those in those situations, but you know, that that's the relay board ready to go. So I'll just quickly do the next one. And we'll go from there. So. All right, oh, the one thing that I should also do quickly, and I'll show you this, is we want to check the diode as well to make sure now that it's in, there's nothing wrong. So we go to diode mode. One direction the diode should always stay open. Uh, the, the white bar is the anode, so this side should show me a voltage drop. So it's a 494. There we go, that worked. Now if I switch the other side, I should just stay, it should not work. Oh, I've got, sorry. I'm gonna have continuity. I can't test the diode in this mode. This relay is creating, um, I'm creating current and it's probably latching the relay so I'm getting con uh, something going on reversed, I think would be my guess, but I'm not 100% positive. But I'm getting that the correct voltage drop. So it does seem like it's protecting. All right, unless somebody can tell me uh, uh, something I'm doing wrong there, obviously I might be just being a bonehead. Um, all right. So, relays are now ready to go in. I've got all of my boards pretty much ready to go in. So, I think um, I, my next step, I think, oh no, I do need to create some form of power supply, um, the main power supply filter. Oh, where did my, I'm missing one nut somewhere. There it is. The power supply. So, I've got to kind of figure out how I want to do that. Now, I could create a quick board. Um, I could try and reuse one of these boards I accidentally made that I don't need all of these for, but like for example, this one. Uh, if you recall, I do have a, I'm gonna turn this fan off now, we don't need it running. I have a, um, I need to put two 20 microfarad capacitors and it looks like I'm clipping a little. Um, I've got those, I think they're here. So there's two 20 microfarad capacitors and I've got a couple of some that I bought for a project accidentally that were supposed to be 40 and I bought 20. So I had extras. Um, but so these guys, in theory, I might be able to do something kind of like this. Um, yeah, that might work since I've got these boards something along those lines. So uh, they're, um, the schematic calls for two 20 microfarad capacitors with a 20, 2K, 20, or 2.2K, two watt resistor between the two of them. And then this jumpers off to the other larger one that I have here. So one of the things that's quite interesting to me is how much smaller capacitors are getting. So uh, as I just talked through, off screen so you couldn't see it. This is a 500 volt, 150 microfarad capacitor. Um, in the actual amp, um, because the voltages are gonna be you know, nearing the 500 volt range, he for some reason used two 300 microfarad in series, which capacitance that halves it but increases its voltage rating. Well, the amp I've got, I checked the voltages in the 400-ish and something ra range unloaded the, the, with the power supply nearing 500, but not exceeding it. So I got a 500 volt capacitor at 150 microfarads. It's the same rating. Uh, and then I'll put a 270K bleeder resistor across it. But I've been trying to decide, I could use this board that I kind of made extra anyway and just slap this um, next to it. Or I could also, I've got some extra of these types of tag boards or, or t uh, terminal strips. I could just put s uh, one of them that has multiple uh, leads on it and that would make it a little easier. So I've got to kind of figure that part out. That will be one of my next steps. So I'm gonna to have to think that through, but that will probably be on the next video. So at this point, as you saw today, we've gotten quite a bit done. We've got all of our boards now, except this power supply board done. And then we'll start putting stuff into the amp. So um, thanks everybody for watching. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, uh, share my videos, tell people that you know that are into this stuff, because I'd love to uh, start getting more viewers and uh, 
engaging in more people with this stuff. I think it's a lot of fun, and I think that uh, uh, learning this stuff's been pretty cool for me, and hopefully other people will enjoy it as well. So thanks, everybody.